The Coin series was quite an innovative system when it was first released in 2012 with Andy and Abyss. It has proven to be a malleable and yet robust game system that can be applied to many different conflicts across history. But this doesn't mean that all coin games were created equal. Today, I'm going to give you my top 5 coin games as of 2022 here today on Legendary Tactics. At the time this video will be published, there are currently 10 official games in the coin series. As it would be a bit ridiculous to do a top 10 list for 10 games, I'm going to give you my top 5 favorite games that use the coin system, but I'll explain why the other games didn't make the list. But first, a couple of caveats. I won't rank Pendragon here at all, as it is the one coin game I have yet to try. No real reason for this, I just haven't had the time yet. Also, I don't feel I have enough play experience with All Bridges Burning to rank that one either, even though it is a neat game with plenty of interesting twists on the game system, and I've enjoyed the limited experience I have had with it so far. However, I feel I have enough play experience with the other 8 to make this list. I'm curious if you will agree with me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. At number 5, I have the game that started it all, Andy and Abyss. I remember picking this game up soon after its publication from my favorite local game store and being absolutely baffled by the rules. The system was so new and so different it really took a while for me to wrap my head around it. But once I got it, this game really shines and continues to shine to this day. I especially love it as a solo game, as the flowchart bots are easy to implement and yet give one a good challenge. One game that did not make my top 5 is Cuba Libre. I like this game, especially as an introduction to the coin system. Even though it is the second game in the series, the smaller scale and fewer event cards make it a decent entry point for newer players unfamiliar with the coin system. While it is a good game, I think it falls short in a few areas. Firstly, there are a lot of events in the deck that feel really swingy. For example, an event card like Echeveria can be absolutely devastating for the government player, and is even more damaging as the game progresses. For a lot of these cards, the timing of their play, good or bad, can make a direct and real difference as to who wins the game. While the event cards in the coin games are always more or less impactful based on when they happen, I find some of these events in Cuba Libre to be more or less game-breaking. To pick on Echeveria again, a lot of hard work by the government player can be undone with this single card, and it can be entirely too expensive to ever be put right. These swingy events don't feel earned, no matter how historical they might be. The other major challenge I have with the game is that the green faction, the Syndicate, doesn't really have a ton of interesting options for their gameplay. Sure, they can be a power broker, threatening to bribe enemy units off the board and that sort of thing, but out of all the green factions in the coin series, I find them the least interesting to play. And this is an accusation that is leveled at every green faction in the series. It just seems that the Syndicate are especially uninteresting. Number 4 on my list is Gandhi. This is a game that is full of wonderful innovations, from the inclusion of non-violent factions to the brilliant solitaire system. The components are luscious and the game provides an interesting balance between the asymmetrical factions. I think this game is a great introduction to this moment in history, although some previous experience with the coin game system is useful, in my opinion. Another game which I felt I had to leave off the list was the sixth entry in the system, Falling Sky. This game feels very different from the others in the series. It has some interesting innovations like the German non-player character and the battle system, but to me this game strays a bit too far from the heart of the coin system, counterinsurgency, and feels more like a war game instead. And the whack-a-mole nature of the game, although it is ever-present in the series overall, feels more frustrating to me here than in the other games for some reason. Number 3 on my list is Colonial Twilight. I'm not sure why I enjoy this game so much, even though a lot of the map board is unpopulated desert. But I love the fact that this is a two-player game with a very innovative system to sort out the taking of events or operations. The battle feels tense and there's lots of variables to consider. And the solitaire system, in my opinion, works very well. Designer Brian Train loves a bit of chaos and prefers a lot of grey over black and white. Pivotal events are interesting because they are all a mixed bag. You will benefit some, but that benefit comes at a cost as well. It makes for some very tough decision making. The other game I had to leave off my list, sadly, was Liberty or Death. I think it is a perfectly good recreation of the American War of Independence, 
and the different factions involved are novel and interesting, except for one, and this is my main issue with the game, the French. I can't really blame the designer here, the reality was that the French arrived later on in the war, and you can't really get around the history of it, but it does leave the French player playing half the game with not a lot to do. I've also found that some people find the native faction limiting to play, although I'm perfectly open to hearing otherwise from someone who enjoys playing them and who can really play them well. I really don't want to diminish this game too much, as I think it is a solid design and I enjoy playing it. Number two on my list is Fire in the Lake. Although it is one of the heaviest games of the series in terms of rules, I find the interaction between the factions fascinating and well balanced. The scope of the game is impressive, incorporating many different elements, including special forces, troops of mixed combat ability, guerrillas, coups, the Ho Chi Minh Trail, etc. It is a compelling design that is one of the more playable recreations out there of the messy conflict that was Vietnam. The only flaw, and the reason why it's not my number one, is that the scope and ambition of the game makes the solitaire bots almost unplayable. Again, I can't fault the designers here, as there are just so many options available that it's hard to convert the decision tree into a flowchart that will provide a semi-intelligent opponent. But man, it just takes so much concentration and effort to play the bots that I would recommend just playing all four factions to the best of your ability if you are looking for a solitaire experience. And that leaves one game left, what I consider to be the pinnacle of the coin series so far, and that is A Distant Plane. The game hits the right sweet spot between the simplest games of the series and its most complex, and at the same time integrates a range of interesting mechanics. From the marriage of inconvenience between the government player and the coalition, to the conflicting yet interwoven victory conditions for all the factions, I am constantly impressed by the design of this game. If there was a flaw, it's only that the green faction, the warlords, have a pretty tough victory condition to hit. No, not getting enough resources for the win, but manipulating the board to have enough uncontrolled population. The reason for this is that the other three factions have a direct or indirect interest in controlling territory, which means that it's going to be pretty hard to be in a position to surge at the right moment for the win. But that is a nice challenge to overcome and certainly not game-breaking. While I may not recommend starting with this title, I recommend you definitely try it at some point, especially with four players. So there you have it, my top five coin games. I hope it came across that I do enjoy every coin game that I have played thus far, and that my list is ordered only in a matter of degree based on my personal preferences. What are your favorites? What are your top five coin games? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. This is Legendary Tactics.